Hi folks, welcome back to my hoard. It's a little after 2.30, it's still January 11th, Saturday, 53, 54 degrees. Obviously, it's raining, so my batteries are not charged. My battery, my big energizer in the back there. And that one says 56, and this one, tells me it is 56 come on and 13 degrees Celsius so what am I up to I really want to see if this ignition system works so I kinda hacked it on there and I'll show that to you in a minute I gave it a couple of pulls and it popped over um, it just seems to be running at an idle, not that much more, so the advance does appear to be a, a problem, that it's a little too far forward. But here, let me set this up, see if I can't get this to pop over for you guys, so you can hear it. Okay, folks, so there we have it. From a look, I can set up this setup and make it spark, right? I did that inside. You guys remember from yesterday. Then today I brought it out here and made it work. I've really done a lousy job hooking this up. Check out the spark plug wire, right? I mean, how is that for bad news? into a piece of copper that sticks in there. I mean, is that ugly or what? Look at the way I hooked up the coil or the uh, pulser. I mean, is this bad? Right, hook that up to the ground. Hook, you know, I mean, guys, this is the way I hook this puppy up, right? So, really doing a lousy job hooking it up and to go a step further I don't know if you guys could see see all the moisture all over everything it was um, it's obviously been cold out right and uh, I mean you guys could see even over here well not bad but actually if you look at the bikes Right, I got, I got even condensation on all over these things. Right, it's that, it's that damp out. So, even with uh, this is not the best way to do it. I, I can show from a conceptual point of view that it goes on there, it fires, the bike runs, and all you have to do is hook up a ground to the bike. Right the two wires, wires to the hall effect and you have to hook up the wire to the spark plug so it's all nice that I have this big mess sitting right here right and there's some stuff that doesn't need to be in that pile but the next concept is to set it up so that it either neatly hangs 
like off the handlebars perhaps if I'm just using it for test or to set it up so that I can actually squeeze it in in this area here. Um, from a conceptual point of view, for this bike, um, it's not racing up because of the whole spark advance issue. Remember, I have an advance built into this thing, plus underneath this, I have one of these that also advances, right? So I'm double advanced, that's why it won't wind up. Um, it just kind of comes up to a certain RPM, and then the advance gets too far out front and, and she cuts off. If I was working on that 250SX over there, or the big red, where's the big red? I must have put the big red in another building. Yeah, I must have moved the big red. Um, if I was using the big red, remember where we are now suddenly this guy here right as long as I'm getting any charge out of it like maybe a hundred milliamps worth of charge going to the batteries I can have a pretty destroyed one of these that still works I can have a pretty destroyed flywheel that will still work and quite honestly I don't care that the uh, coils, these two coils that provide AC to the CDI unit, I don't care that they're no good because I'm running it on DC now, right? I'm running it on a battery. So I don't care that that's no good. About the Advance, um, the 250 ES SX motor, the TRX 250, those all use an electronic Advance which would be provided right out of the box. So from a 250 point of view, all you have to do is hook up the two wires. Oh, it's not, it's not on this. It would actually be under the, it'd be part of the uh, case that, that this is part of. But the two wires um, to the uh, pulser, uh, which on the harness, it would be this wire and the ground and that wire. I don't know which one it is. I think it's this guy. I think it's that guy, actually. Um, and ground. And you would be all set. So that would give you the pulser. Then you run wi one wire to ground. You hook up to the battery. And you hook up to the spark plug. You pull the string. Not only would it be running, but it'd be running probably with a pretty close advance. The advance would be about where it needs to be. So if you found a nice place to tuck it on the bike and put it on the bike well, you, uh, you'd actually have a nice, a nice running bike. Um, you would not have to buy a um, cheap, is $49.99 uh, plus shipping for a T250 ES SX CDI unit. So you'd save that $50. Um, you'd save the 100 to $150 for this, and you'd save the other $100 on a nice new flywheel, right? You could save all that money and instead spend $16 on this guy. Uh, 250ES already has a battery, so you don't need that. Um, these guys, you could probably use the coil, quite honestly, that's on board, because I didn't pick this coil special. This coil came part of a two-piece set um, and I just threw it on there. I don't think it's all that fussy about the coil. Okay, so we um, bench tested the portable CDI and we got Spark. Now we officially tested it and we have, uh, let's call it functionality of concept. Uh, the next thing to do is to um, further uh, refine it by putting in a um, a, um, what, what do we call this, pulse inducer, <laughs> uh, yeah, pulse inducer, let's call it that, uh, that does not have an advance on it, so I have to, um, I have to kill the advance on this guy, um, D-E-S-M-8, Des, Desmin-8, Desm-8, 
um, he, he wanted me to just take a quick look at how much advance is on here. And to be honest with you, I was kind of curious just to kind of get some of these numbers in mind. I think, I think 15 to 25 is what I have in mind, but I actually should measure this, get a protractor on it, draw a couple of lines and see, see how much advance I get out of it um, and give, that, give it a try. And then, uh, and then once again, lock it up, open this thing up, put it in there, and then fire it up, see if I can't race it up and uh, get it running good. But anyway, so the bench test works, and now the concept on a bike works. I put a DC CDI and got it to run on a, um, on a uh, Honda 250SX. All right, folks, live, love, and have a great time. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Horde. Till then, remember to keep your tires down, your tracks down, your handlebars and your steering wheels up. Um, thanks to all for watching and subscribing and commenting. And thanks for William Statton for some of the help on the CDIs. If he didn't say, yo, your CDI looks a little too small to be a DC unit, I would have really been scratching my head there for a while. I was kind of sniffing after that because it wasn't drawing any power. Um, but I didn't know that, and I wouldn't have known where to, where to get the right ones if he didn't provide me with that uh, L Alexander 77 source. So I owe him one. Folks, go check out his channel. Watch some of his videos. He's, uh, he's swapping engines from Chinese bikes to Honda bikes. He's doing cool things. Uh, you can always go out there and learn something about suspension or motor mounts or the electrical systems. I mean, he's, he's doing quite a bit. Right now, he's going to swap a Chinese engine onto a Suzuki, a Suzuki 230. And as a matter of fact, I've probably mentioned this a couple of times. There are two Honda or two Suzuki 230s in my fleet. One of them is smashed up pretty bad. The one that's smashed up real bad. Smashed up as in somebody like took it off a jump that was like 100 feet and kind of bent the frame up. Uh, that one I don't think I could get to. The other guy, I just got things snagging my clothes when I come in here. This is the other guy. Somebody actually painted it up. Um, you can see the purple there. Somebody actually was going to do something with this. And I bought it, and I thought I had a Honda motor sitting in the frame. I don't appear to. Um, I was going to, I'm, well, I was going to, or I am going to, throw a Honda engine on this thing. Yeah, this is a Suzuki, which really doesn't belong in my fleet. And this is a, a Kawasaki Mojave, one of them dual overhead valve guys. It's complete engines there and all. Right, you guys can see that. Um, this is another one. These two really don't belong in my fleet. I don't know if we can see the other Suzuki where it's hiding. It's in this horde somewhere. All right, folks, I'm going to let you go. I keep meaning to, um, seems like every year, this time of year, this is another Cushman. I kind of uncover it and get it fired up and get it running again. You guys can see the steering wheel there and the seat right underneath that tarp, number 14. Um, I always like uncover it, get it running, get it all fired up, and then somehow or another that happens to it again and again, right? You could kind of see it there. You can see all the crap piled onto it. So I don't know. I have to get better at this. There's no use owning it if it's going to be a uh, just support a pile of junk. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you run. Take care of yourselves. We'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching, subscribing, and commenting. Bye now.